It's another episode of Wearable Today. Episode, I believe, was it 71? I think it's 71 or 72. I, I lost that. Anyway, my name is Jeffrey Powers, and this, this week we're going to talk about the health of wearables. Um, not, not as wearables showing you how healthy you are, but if you're wearing the wearable, is it hurting you more than it's helping you? We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Google Glass, uh, Fitbit, and uh, we're going to meet Larry Smarr. Who's Larry Smarr, you ask? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to do that and a whole bunch more. It is another episode of Wearable Today. Hey, everybody. Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine. Think Magazine. Put in a geek. You got Geekazine. And, of course, Wearable Today over at www.wearabletoday.com. And you can check it out, all the shows, and uh, go from there. And as always, my cohort in crime, the master of disaster in the plaster, um and ceiling hooks and stuff like that mr luke wallace how you doing doing good tonight jeff yes if you're looking for me i'm luke luca on twitter that's l-u-k-e-l-u-c-a uh i don't have birdie with me tonight but uh so you'll just be able to email me at luke at wearable today.com birdie's on vacation right taking a little break taking a little mm. break actually yeah. just been so busy uh didn't have time to go uh grab her so yeah that's okay that's okay <laughs> And we are going to be talking about breaks here uh, after the news here. So stick around. We've got to, off. of course, we've got to stick around for the whole show. Hello. What am I saying? So, uh, but just so you know, we've, we're, we've got some show uh, plans uh, for our shows. Because we do the show every single Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8, 8 p.m. Spe specific. Central. S Central. <laughs> Central. And 6 p.m. Pacific Time or specific time. I don't know. So 7 p.m. Mountain, right? Mountain. I guess it's yeah, to so play me. Mountain? Oh, there's people in mountain. Play oh. me some mountain mountain wearables. So anyway, let's get into let's get into our big news. Little arms. <sighs> well, this is interesting. Google Glass has shut down their Explorer support pages. If you go to google.com/glass/start. That's kind of the home page for Glass on where you would be able to get in and see what all is going on. Well, now the home page just says, thanks for exploring with us. The journey doesn't end here. And then they have some links to social networks and Glass at work and some signing up for you know a mailing list when, you, when Glass has more information, but that's kind of it. So interesting development in the Google Glass front. Yeah, it was bound to happen too, so. All right, well, Fitbit files for $100 million IPO. That's that investment thing with the money and stuff like that. Uh, they were reporting a profit of $131.8 million in 2014, even with the issues that they had with their wearables. They plan to get more aggressive at the launch after the launch of Apple Watch, of course. Fitbit's biggest advantage over any of the watches, though, is the cross-platform uh, ability. It also gives people who don't own the latest smartphones a power, uh, uh, the ability to still track their information if they wanted to. So if you want to uh, check out more on that, we've got the uh, link over at cbsnews.com forward slash news. Next up, we have someone we want you to meet. His name is Larry Smarr. Hello, Larry. <laughs> this professor at the University of California, San Diego, is currently the most tracked man in wearables. And no, he doesn't have a million Twitter followers that are tracking him. He actually tracks over 150 parameters on his body. And you might say, well, that's just, that's just weird. Like, you know, he just went out and bought every sort of Fitbit and Apple Watch thing that he could find. Well, no, actually, he's been doing this for 15 years predating most of the modern-day wearables. Uh, if you want to read more about Larry Smarr and his you know, quantified self, that uh, he's probably the leader in having the most data on himself, uh, you can check it out over at the show notes uh, at youtube.com slash wearable today. Is that, is that it? Oh, slash user slash this week in glass. Where did you find that? Uh, it was in the URL bar on the Wearable Today page. Okay. Well, he's uh, over at smh.com.au. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, the article is at smh.com, but uh, okay. 
He, the, there will be links in the show notes. Oh, yeah, yeah, there will be links. Oh, yeah, I see where you're going with that. Good job. Like, come Good to our job. show notes, and that way you can find this and all the other news. All the other news you can handle with wearable technology. And now uh, we move over to our, wear, our Fun Me section of wearable today. And uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about white shirts that uh, can't stain. And you're going, what? Hey, what? can't stain what even if you pour hot coffee on them yes even if you pour wine on them yes even if you pour uh blood on i don't know (laughs) no no that's what elizabeth and clark make their liz lemon line the group has a kickstarter and nine days left to go on this kickstarter uh the shirt has gone beyond its expectations as you could see it was a thirty thousand dollar start they have one hundred sixty-three thousand dollars and two thousand two hundred seventy-two pledges. Uh, you got nine days to pledge on this. So you can pledge something as simple as ten dollars. But you know, I'll show you this picture. She's uh, she's pouring it right on on herself, and it's like I want to stain my shirt. No, wait, no, I want to stain my shirt. Stain my shirt. No, ah. <laughs> she's having fun with that. So, but anyway, if you want to check that out, it's it's pretty cool. And of course, we have. Uh, stain proof shirts already but not to this level and you know if you're if you're a waitress or a waiter if you're a uh, if you're any type of server that has to wear a white shirt um you know this is going to be perfect for you um it's cuz you know that's one of the reasons why I don't wear white shirts and definitely after labor day never wear white after labor day so but anyway uh so uh, what uh, any thoughts on 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 should you wear white shirts at all or look or you know, I don't wear a lot of white shirts just on their own, but um, yeah, I wish this was in some other colors, but I also wish it was for men. As far as I can tell, this Kickstarter is just for ladies' shirts and tees, which you I'm not really sure. We- hmm? You don't want to wear a ladies' blouse? Uh, not as such. Uh, I don't okay. really. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Call me weird. Um, okay, weird. But- yeah, the buttons are on the wrong side, so it would it would mess me all up. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't really know like why they're only making it for women. But well, they're, they're making you know. a proof. They're basically making a proof of concept, and and they want to they want to probably want to focus on one type of shirt. Otherwise, yeah. you have yeah. small, medium, large, extra large, double extra large, triple extra large, quadruple extra large, extra tall, super extra tall, extra tall, extra venti, extra venti with cream mocha latte venti, and stuff like Can that. Can I get so you, that half calf no sap? No, 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 no. And uh, and and your name is Lucky. Yeah, Lucky. So, but no, it, it makes sense. Uh, so I, I wouldn't. I would. I would guess. That once uh, once Liz Lemon gets this shirt perfected, they'll make a men's line. So don't worry about it. It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. I wonder about that copyright. I'm like, how can they call it Liz Lemon? I mean, I guess that's... Seems like that's a copyrighted name by NBC. But Is it? I don't know. I don't, Can you just... I guess people can have other names. It's just confusing. I don't know. Can you market something with the... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how the, the copyright on that would work. My understanding, it was a parody of two different companies or something like that. Yeah, like Lululemon and something else, like uh, like Elizabeth Clark said they called it their Liz Lemon line, but I don't know. Yeah, you crazy but, Liz Lemon. But you know, in in, in the fashion line, it's very uh, competitive. So oh, yeah. I would guess that they're probably just simply going to put out these shirts. Take uh take the patents out of it and then sell it to somebody and say hey you know you license it you take care of it here's the patent I'll give you all the licensing for the patents and the stuff like that and they'll just sit back and make a million dollars or more. Yeah, so it's definitely possible. Yeah, definitely. So, but anyway, they got nine days to go and and of course we've seen Kickstarters go you know look like this fabulous and all of a sudden they just completely fall flat. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. But. Um, proof is in the coffee and the spilling, I suppose. We'll, uh, we'll see if that, that all works and we'll see if, uh, they go from there and, and yeah, go Well, from they there. have raised, uh, what is that, uh, five times their, their goal, so. Well, yeah, yeah, but you can raise five times your goal and still, you, and still 
Well, let's put it. Uh, let's put it this way: that little video right there, that could actually be. Eh, I'm not saying it's it's uh, it's doctored or anything like that, but there's a possibility mm -hmm. that it could be. And yeah. if that's the case, then um, then they don't have the actual concept put down. Then all of a sudden, uh, you know, when when the money comes in, they go, "Well, what do we do now?" And that hundred sixty three thousand nine hundred thirty eight dollars, it'll probably it'll probably go up to maybe one eighty, uh, somewhere around one eighty to one ninety when everything's said and done. Out of that one eighty one ninety, they still have to take care of the taxes and they still have to take care of all the uh, all the thank you gifts. So uh, that that that'll fall that'll fall from one one eighty to back down to a hundred thousand or. or one thousand dollars really quickly so um now it's it's a it's it's something where you know when you when you're in a kickstarter you, you've got that proof of concept it's like okay we're ready to go and then you just don't know where to go from there and, and you see people fall flat on their faces all the time and there's been a couple kickstarters i've seen i've i've personally invested in and they fell flat on their face and i never saw my money back not much you can do that's why that's why they do it this way so you know you could try and sue them, but it's not gonna it's not gonna help unless there's like millions of dollars behind it. So, but anyway, if you want to check that out, we've got that over at Kickstarter at Kickstarter.com. So, all right, and that ends up the news uh, section, uh, Luke. So, so the new house. Are, are you tapping on your microphone or something? Not me. Special guest Birdie has arrived. I thought you said that Birdie wasn't gonna be here. Yeah, well, Birdie does what she wants. So Birdie, Birdie didn't want to miss the show, and so uh, so she's here, and uh, you know, glad to be feet. here. She's like, kind of thinking. I'm gonna well, lick my this feet. Good idea. So. <laughs> oh, it's like it's like a little finger, it's like this or something like this. What? Hmm. She's kind of thinking. She's kind of thinking. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> just like she's like stop making fun of me. So yeah. All right, well, let's yeah. let's get started. Uh, first of all, I want to let you guys know, programming note, we have a very jam-packed schedule for the next few weeks. Um, Luke's going to be gone next week. The following week was going to be a holiday, and then the following week I am going to be gone. So we're going to have this three-week uh, interlude. There might be a show next Monday. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. We'll see what happens. But definitely the the two Mondays after that, uh, we're going to we're going to take the Monday off to celebrate, um, and uh, and do some cooking out because it's it's the start of summer and you just you just gotta stop sometimes and say hey it's the start of summer and I've and I've got to start working on my my backyard project which is actually putting up some sort of patio wish area so we can put out the uh, fire pits so we can put out the chairs. And uh, actually enjoy the backyard this year. So, yeah. and you've got a brand new backyard to to enjoy yourself. I do, I do. We, you know, people are aware of the studio move. So, uh, yeah, we're moving into the new house, getting used to that, dealing with issues that invariably come up, but it makes them no less annoying to because you're. It's really hard to plan for them. It's really hard to plan for the unknown. So, you do your best, and you see what happens. So. And of course, you have to deal with the uh, with the old house as well, right? Yes, the old house is on the market, and we're going through that process right now. So, so if you'd like to buy Luke's old house, <laughs> please dial. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's all moving forward. We're all good there. It's got um, wearable technology in it. It does have technology. I don't know if it has any wearable tech in it. Um, if you get into the house, and you live in the house. Isn't yeah, that where a house? I don't think that's how that. I don't think that's how that works. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, there goes that. So you you were one heck of a salesperson there, Luke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Like, um, but I do have something else I wanted to show. I don't know. Did you did you want to talk about anything else before I got? Oh into yeah, the, um, yeah. Well, well, you get set up first of all. I want to. Oh, and I don't have these new ones. Uh, uh, I don't know if you notice the difference. Hopefully, there's a difference. But I just moved over to brand new computer. Um, over the week and or over this last week, I've been doing some videos, um, building uh, computers, and uh, basically showing the idea that computer building is not dead. Uh, desktop builds and stuff like that. So, got a couple of videos over on Geekazine about the the desktop build. But one of the desktops that I built is part of the new system here, 
over at uh, over at Geekazine. So, and the new system is running the Wirecast to, to see all the uh, all the 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 screens and stuff like that. So hopefully that's improved on the video a little bit and uh, and go from there. So and the sound, uh, hopefully the audio is a little bit better too. And hopefully I look a little bit better, more distinguished. You look pretty nice. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, and and uh, as as the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be moving around the studio just a little bit more and putting in some new stuff and uh, going from there. So just kind of giving it an overall overhaul and uh, and uh, see what happens and and make things look prettier because we like pretty, right? Oh yeah, we do. We like pretty things. Speaking of pretty things, I had something I want to show off. Um, it's it's not mine technically. It's uh, it, it's the company I work for. We needed a new test device, and so I realized this came out a couple of weeks ago. It goes on your wrist. A lot of people have been interested in it, so I just wanted to show off the LG Watch Urbane. <laughs> it's an Woo-hoo. Android Wear. Hopefully, no one thought I was going with uh, Apple Watch on that. Um, but so I was going to just do a quick unboxing. It comes in this little plastic case and then the actual box here. I'll put it back up and just show you this, you know, standard little box that opens, right? And then what's inside that's different is now the watch, I turned it on earlier, so it doesn't actually come (laughs) turned on, but, uh, so here's what it looks like when you open the box and there's just the watch in there. Okay. And then let me... If you pop that out and you pop that out, there's all these little uh, containers that you don't even have to take out. You just open the little flaps and there's like the charger on that side and this side has the little charging cradle and cable and then there's a little instruction manual on this top one. But um, So here's what the watch looks like. You can see it's relatively thick on the side, okay. but the front is completely round. See, so unlike the Moto 360, which has what they call the flat tire, here it's at the top of your screen. Um, the LG Watch Urbane is completely round uh, screen, or has a completely round screen. Okay. On the back, I'll try to show this clearly, but um, just back it up got... just a touch. There. And it's still not focusing in. That's okay. Yeah. You can kind of see it. So. There you get the um, the little heart rate sensors in the middle and then the little uh, contacts for it, the charger. It doesn't use wireless charging. It actually has to make contact. Um, the little charging port, a little charging dock has the similar little pins on it. And when you line them up, it kind of has a little magnet and snaps in there. I'll try to hold this near the mic. So it kind of snaps in there and uses... So it has... A magnet to hold it but not uh, wireless charging so interesting choice from LG okay um, one little button on the side it's just a button it doesn't like rotating it doesn't do anything um, if you try to put the cradle on backwards it kind of aligns but not quite right so it's relatively easy to tell that you've got it in there right but uh, real nice um, it, it got the Android 5.1.1 update for um, Google Play so you probably can't see what those cards say, but that's probably for the best because it's all my personal stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting, though, is in the recent Google Play Services update, this is kind of getting geeky now, um, basically there was an update that rolled out for Android phones that applies to almost every Android phone, um, pretty much anything running Android from the past three years. Okay. Uh, it got an update, so you can actually have two wearables paired with the same phone. So actually both of these wearables are currently paired to my phone. And so the updates go to both okay. screens. <laughs> so um, kind of interesting. Uh, I think it looks really nice. I would say, let me take my Moto 360 off and do just a little bit more of a comparison here. What do you mean by two pair of wearables? So you had to unpair your Google Glass then? Or? So before you had to, remember, before, you like, and I haven't tried it since. You couldn't have both Google Glass and a Moto 360 paired to your phone. It just wouldn't let you do both. Okay. Now you can actually pair two wearables to your phone. I haven't tried with Glass yet, um, but 
So here's the Moto 360 next to the LG watch. I think the they're about physically the same size, but the bezel on the LG is bigger, so the screen ends up being slightly smaller. So um, take that for what you will. Okay. Um, but physically, they're almost exactly the same size as far as thickness uh, goes. The LG watch has a little bit more um, mass up at the top where the strap yeah. attaches, yeah. so you can see it's a little bit it's a little bit bigger when you get outside the the main clock face but uh yeah really really pretty this is in the kind of gold colored brass colored uh, whatever you want to call it uh it's cool finish but yeah that uh i think that that watch face they've got like the default watch face is just really nice and i don't know if i can get that yeah. to focus but oh i like yeah i like that gold on on the watch face that's that's really yeah. nice it's really and it's really it's pretty slick better... looking yeah, I, I think it's a lot better than the 360. Look, because I, I don't, I don't, I don't care for the plastic look. Yeah. Um, if I if I have a watch, I want it. I don't want it blinged out. It's not. I don't want a Rolex or anything like that. Yeah. But I want something that that looks decent. Yeah, and I mean, I think this one just looks like. I would say this is the nicest looking Android Wear watch that's out today. Um, at least okay. as far as like it looks pretty much like a regular watch, and it you know looks nice it doesn't look cheap yeah um, it's not but it uh um yeah we'll definitely see how what the battery life is like uh, uh do some tests for us and i'll mm -hmm. uh, we'll go from there and, and uh and yeah put them side by side charge them all up and and let them drain at the same time so we'll see what happens yeah just wear one on each wrist and uh we'll see how far how long they last so what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? <laughs> yeah. What time is it? I don't... Yeah. But yeah, so, really, really nice. Okay. All right. Well, and, and of course, that's uh, that's through your company. So uh, we'll, we'll try and get the test. We'll do all the tests in the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah. I mean, our um, we've got people there that are going to be using it for projects and, and testing things out. So um, they'll yeah. get a lot of usage. So I'll get a lot of feedback from other people at the company, too. Uh, a lot of them are iOS users, and uh, I've showed them pictures of this watch, and they said, actually, that looks really nice. That looks uh, like nicer than the Apple Watch as far as, like, it doesn't look like a geeky watch, really. Like, it looks yeah. kind of like just a regular watch, and so you wouldn't feel awkward wearing it in any way. Um, so Okay. We'll, well see. That's cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, speaking of geeky things, I did get a I did get a to a couple toys this week, uh, and one of them was the brand new, and I don't have it nearby, uh, the new Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Oh, yeah, that's really and, nice. Uh, which it's it's a uh, it's it's a nice phone, but I, I'm not too impressed with the edges um, mm. because this has an edge on both the left and the right side, as opposed to some of the uh, Note edges, which only bend one side. Um, this one just uh, the bends both sides, so it, it's the biggest problem I have is it's kind of tough to hold. If you, the the corners are a little bit thinner, so they kind of feel a little bit sharper, and and it feels like you're holding the phone. And I, I got my iPhone here, but it feels like you're holding the phone backwards. Mm, with yeah, the, with that, of the curves the on bevel. the yeah. front. <laughs> That's an so, interesting uh, observation. Oh uh, yeah, and so I'm, I'm somebody. They're sending me a case as well to see how that works. Uh, because I'm, I'm not opposed to cases. In fact, with my iPhone, I just put on. I got uh, this is actually pretty cool. I uh, I got a Kickstarter, uh, actually an Indiegogo company, uh, Cinder, I think it's called. And this is basically a curved glass that's on top of my iPhone, a screen protector. And uh, apparently, nobody makes screen protectors uh, that fit onto the curves of the of the iphone 6 so they designed it um and fits fits on and it stays right on uh the corner is really nice and uh i know that they've got an indiegogo project going right now it's like 30 dollars to get that screen protector and it's going to be coming out in november this one's they, they sent it to me and they said this is handmade so i've got a handmade screen protector wow. on my iphone which i thought was pretty cool so, but yeah, not really wearable technology, but protecting the stuff that helps with my wearable technology, I guess that all works out from there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's move on from there. 
Um, we didn't we didn't really collect our steps, so we didn't. Uh, we'll we'll do the steps next week for the steps game. Um, but hey, want to let you know about uh, going over to our deals page over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. I don't have the lower third up here because, like I said, the new computer. But uh, wearabletoday.com forward slash deals, wearabletoday.com forward slash deals, wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. And you can get you, you can get some deals on some wearable technology like the Moto 360, like the Fitbit, um, like some of these other uh, wearables. Uh, some of them are uh, returns. Some of them are closeouts. Some of them are, are refurbs. What, well, however it works, you're going to get a great deal on that over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. All right, let's move on. Let's get to the focus, and uh, because uh, this is, you know, oh, somebody just asked, have you tried Loop Pay on the Samsung Six? Uh, no, uh, Eric, I have not tried Loop Pay on the Samsung Six yet. Um, since I'm do, since I got the iPhone now, um, I yeah, I don't know if I want to set that. I'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'll definitely. If it's a feature on the phone, I will definitely give it a try. Um, the other thing is, I am, I'm getting a, a, a Qi charger. Uh, I just ordered it today. Qi charger coming to the house in the next couple days, it's because uh, I'm gonna start testing out the wireless uh, charging capabilities of some of these phones, and yeah. uh, and and your watches, your watches definitely have that that wireless capability, right? The Moto 360 does. It uses a standard. Uh, yeah, Bertie, it's exciting. Uh, the LG watch uh, now just showed the pins. I don't think that it also supports wireless charging. I would think if it did, they wouldn't put the pins on there. But, um, yeah, so yeah. some do, some don't. Okay. What Bertie's got an interesting chirp today. Is, is, it, is it something happening over there or what? Yeah, she's just excited. She's excited to be back on the show. Excited? So. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, uh, I'm glad she's here. I mean, it was... You know, a show without Birdie nowadays is is no show at all. I and mean, we should we you know might as well just not do a show if Birdie's not on. Yeah, well, yeah. If Birdie ever has a conflict <laughs> and uh, is going to be busy on a Monday, then uh, yeah, we might have to move the show to a different day. So, just letting people know that is right, Birdie gonna is Birdie gonna go on dates or something like that or what? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I, that was more of a joke. Uh, Bertie does not usually have anything going on on a Monday. Um, but if we're traveling or something like that and I'm doing the show remotely, then, you know, it might might be more of an issue. So Bertie's not going to meet a pigeon or a swan or anything like that? No, nope, nope, that's not how it works. Like that. No? No? Okay. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't know a bird. I don't have a bird on my shoulders. Maybe you'll get another parrot or something like that. And... Birdie will have another birdie, and there'll be birdie and birdie too. I I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. All right, well, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe time we should move on. Under the focus. Under the on, focus. On, let's focus on the focus. Focus on the focus. All right, let's let's get into the focus, and that is, you know, last year Fitbit devices were re starting to get recalled due to a meta allergical rash that the device caused. In fact, a lot of these Fitbits are still getting recalled. I just read an article uh, right before the show saying that Fitbit still gets recalls for some of their uh, wearable devices. And I bet you there's a lot of people that, you know, they, they put on a device and it irritates them in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's not the, uh, maybe it's not the, the metal touching that, that irritates the skin. Maybe it's just a corner of the watch or something like that that might scratch. Maybe you put on that LG watch and there'll be like some sharp edge and it just cuts you up like no tomorrow or something like that. Um, but, you know, jewelry is, and, and yeah, jewelry is jewelry. And if you've ever worn gold uh, necklaces, I actually wore a gold necklace back in the 90s, yeah, so. Um, and didn't realize it, but eventually you get things like skin tags and stuff like that because uh, I guess that's what forms up uh, and, and certain reactions to, to, to people's bodies, they, they get caused like so we start putting new wearables on our skin we're going to start putting new wearables into our skin underneath our skin into our muscles and into our bodies what can we do to keep the things safe from you know uh, metal allergies uh electrical shocks coming through 
uh, going back and forth. It's kind of like, you know, the, you remember those bracelets, the golf bracelets, you, you know, you see the commercials where they're standing up on one leg and they're, they're toppling over. And then they put mm -hmm. these bracelets on and they stand on one leg and then somebody tries to pull down one side and they can't do it or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, it's, it, that's the positive of that, but there's also the negative where your skin turns green because of the type of metal that, that they use for those bracelets. So, where is where is it going to go with wearables? Is that going to be something that we need to be worried about? Because you know, if you start investing millions of dollars in technology that's going to be worn and touching your skin, actively flush to your skin, touching your skin, it can't be. A, it, you can't have people coming back and saying, "Hey, you know, it's it, it, it's it's causing a rash, and you know, I've got full discoloration, and they have to amputate my arm or something like that." You just can't have that happen on anything like that. So yeah, yeah. So are we talking about the article now? You haven't really <laughs> referenced what this are. I mean, I guess you kind of showed a link to it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, well, I did. That's that's, that's that... what I'm talking about. Is, okay, is, so yeah, is... yeah. I mean, there were also things on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, you're, you're paying attention. You're paying attention, right? Yeah, no, I'm mean, I, I, I'm not paying. I don't know. I'm, I'm paying attention. So okay. Uh, the one thing that you didn't mention, it's like you were mentioning everything. So what am I supposed to say? Uh, there's also these ideas of like thermal energy and magnetic energy, electrical energy near you, right? So like the yeah. thermal energy, uh, like just things getting too hot like underneath your skin or something like that. Um, so I think that there's that, uh, you, you know, yeah. Um, my brother-in-law is allergic to latex, so he can't wear standard latex gloves, you know, that like, I don't, I don't know what the statistic is. 95, 99% of people, whatever it is, can wear latex gloves and that's fine. I mean, especially if you're only wearing them for an hour or two even, um, but like if he wears them for more than a few minutes, he, he starts to get a rash and things like that. And so there's certain types of, um, you know, products that would just, he just can't wear. And so if you've got some sort of latex based, uh, wearable, um, which you could see happening with more of these 3d printed stuff, we're going to see, you know, that, that kind mm -hmm. of thing come into play of like, you know, people will say, well, I can print with this, but I can't actually print a wearable with this because my skin would react to it. So, yeah, I think all of those kinds of allergies um, and then, yeah, other safety risks about like, um, you know, having those devices constantly right next to you. Right. So like your cell phone in your pocket, people are already talking about the risks of or thinking of the risks of. But uh, what about something, you know, like a a Wi-Fi radio permanently or almost permanently strapped to your wrist, you know, what yeah. kind of issue does that cause? Does it cause any? I mean, they, they obviously do tests and they say, yes, it's a very low amount and we don't think that that has any long-term effects, but they just, they don't know what it's like yeah. for somebody who you wears a know. smartwatch yeah. for 20 years because no one ever has because it hasn't been that long. So exactly and I'm, I'm seeing on your arm you have a you have like a couple bruises on there don't you <laughs> uh the, you can call those new house bruises right from all the, oh, okay all the work oh, okay. i'm doing around the house no that's uh it's not from <laughs> uh, no these are <laughs> these are uh easily explained by the number of times i've hit my arm on something uh while doing something around the got house it. so got it got it got it so well eric has said uh up on in the chat here um bring that up we had three Fitbits that were recalled. Pain in the butt took months for my wife's rash to go away, and that's that's the big thing right there. I like to uh, I like to think of it like you know how you had the old thermal printers and you, the thermal paper, which was basically it was burning in the in the uh, the text into the paper. So if you had that paper sitting on a table or something like that, and you got a flame too close to it, all of a sudden that would start to darken. Um, and and go from there. But it also, if you were to leave that piece of paper out on a table or something like that for uh, a week or something like that, and the sun got directly on it, and and maybe there was a uh, something on the corner or something like that, you could actually notice the differences um, from the uh, from the transfer. So the same thing goes with your skin. Is if you got something that's sending pulses, just like you said, uh, over time. We're not going to know what that ha maybe maybe you know ten years from now all of a sudden our our, our hands and our wrists on on our our watch hand uh, won't have the ability to form a fist or anything like that because 
because it's gone through some sort of uh, wear system because there's some sort of weird pulse going through. And, and I'm, I'm exaggerating big time, but you know, it, it could happen. Um, it, it, there, there's always that possibility. Um, and then the other thing that I was thinking of was uh, I can't wear rubber gloves because mm. what hap- because of my skin condition. What happens is um, and I have to be very careful if I wear rubber gloves. We'll, we'll just put it that way, or anything such as that, maybe a rubber ha- cap or something like that. Because what happens is I'll sweat so much that I'll take the gloves off and I'll start peeling the skin off my hands. And if you, of course, with most people, any, anybody, if you if you do that too much, you'll actually start to see sores on your hands. But because you, what you're supposed to do is when you take off rubber gloves, you're supposed to take them directly to the sink and wash your hands with soap and water. So they rehydrate and the skin doesn't peel off. That's not dead skin. It might be dead skin that's coming off. But underneath that dead skin is real skin, and that's also coming off as well. So you, you think of all that and these... Uh, allergies uh, that all of a sudden show up through time. Um, and maybe you don't have a nickel allergy or something like that. And then all of a sudden you've got nickel just sitting there pushing through your through your veins. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're allergic to nickel. And, and, and so you're going, wait, what? I, that's weird. But it's not because that's how that's how we work. My brother, my brother was, used to eat nuts all the time until about five years ago, and he got a, a nut allergy. And the only nut he can mm-hmm. eat now is a peanut. So, And he loves nuts. I mean, we used to eat pistachios left and right um, when we went to see movies and stuff like that. So and he hates the fact he can't eat a pistachio nowadays. So I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's interesting. And, of course, it's going to be different for everybody. Like Eric said, you know, his wife had that rash there for a long time, and it's going to take a long time to uh to clear up if you get like like i said skin tags on certain types of, of necklaces you've got to either live with it or you got to go to a doctor and get those removed it's it's not like you can you can just cut them off with a knife or something like that you don't want to yeah you uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> no no you don't um yeah, I think it's uh, it's interesting to think about, you know, what does this mean going forward? Does it mean, will there be a backlash at some point against wearable tech? And people will say, well, I want wear, you know, I want some wearable tech, but I only want things that clip onto my clothes. I don't want things that actually attach to my skin. Because, you know, we've seen those kinds of things with Fitbits yeah. and that kind of stuff. Like, you don't actually have to have them against your skin. You can just have them, you know, on your waist and, uh, you know, on your waistband or something where it's not even... Uh, touching you kind of almost in your pocket um so there's things like that that people might might start to see a backlash uh, against um eric 40 has another question or comment uh we'll call that up go for it kind of a question he says is there any point to wearing apple watch fitbit etc when you sleep is there any real info the devices get while you are sleeping so uh, i would say that they all purport to provide valuable information. So I've talked to a few people at work and asked, um, like one guy at work wears a pebble and he says that he would want, like he wouldn't want an Apple watch or something because he would have to charge it for so long every day that he wouldn't be able to wear it at night comfortably. Mm -hmm. And he, so far I haven't heard anybody say that they really, care about the the sleep information they do say yeah. that it can track the kind of how deep your sleep is it can contract the the you know restlessness in your sleep because if you're moving around it'll pick up that movement and tell you oh you didn't sleep real well assuming that you that any sort of movement while you're asleep must be bad and you must not be sleeping well um, but there's also the uh, the the key feature that I've heard people talk about is an alarm. They really want something on their wrist because they they say that the alarm, when it just starts buzzing your wrist, that wakes them up more gently than a beeping alarm clock next to the bed. Uh, I don't have any wearable that I've done that with, so I don't I can't speak from personal experience. But I would say that the 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 info probably isn't the most important thing there. Jeff, what do you think? I I don't. I wouldn't want that. And I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you a story. 
and this is why, the reason why I wouldn't want that on my as of, for my watch. I my first phone was uh, Nokia nine forty, had the case for it and had a belt clip, and so I you know put it on my belt. That's how I wore my phones uh, for a long time, and I always did two things with my phones. And the nine forty did. I don't think it had the vibrate function. You had to actually get a special battery to to have vibrate on on those phones at that time. But a, as time came, you know, you got the vibrate into the phones, and so whenever I had on my, you know, I had it on my uh, belt clip, I would you know vibrate, and I'd you know I'd get a phone call. I answer the phone call, no, it never really disturbed anybody. My the first phone that I switched off the belt clip was actually my first iPhone, the three GS. And I had that in my left pocket always. And uh, I would get these ghost vibrations. And even to this day, not as bad as it used to be, but I would, I would get ghost vibrations on my hip. And, uh, and I think if you had something like that vibrating from your wrist for a couple of years where you get very used to it, um it's like having a limb taken off you get ghost pains going through that so i don't know and especially if that's trying to wake me up because well i i have a very natural ability to wake up without an alarm clock or before an alarm clock about 90 percent of the time 90 to 95 percent of the time i will wake up one minute before that alarm clock goes off and i'll turn off that alarm clock before it even it'll, it'll even go off but then, you know, there's cases, you know, I, I will, you know, when it's like four, I got to get up at four o'clock in the morning, um, alarm goes off and, and uh, it catches me. But the, for the most part, I can, I can catch my alarm before it even goes off. So uh, I think there's a lot of familiarity to that. And I, I wouldn't want that. That's the, that's the reason why I wouldn't. So, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done the same thing a few times. If I, it's like, if I think hard enough about the time I want to get up, like, it seems mm-hmm. like I can wake up right around that time, uh, like you said, kind of right before the alarm goes off. It's kind of funny that that works that way, but I think it's just your body gets used to, you know, kind of telling time in your sleep of just like it can tell how long you've been asleep and it gets a sense. And I don't know if it's also the light from outside or, or what exactly it is. That's, that's something I've never really read up on is how can you kind of, you can kind of train your body to wake up at certain times if you you know, if it's on a regular enough schedule. So, yeah, but if you get, if you get that on your wrist and, and, and all of a sudden your, your wrist is vibrating, I mean, we don't wear our phones. So the, the phone, when it vibrates, it vibrates off the, the nightstand or maybe even on the bed or something like that, but never really, we're never really wearing it in the yeah. same exact place for it to vibrate every single time. So I don't think that's going to be a problem, but I, I really do think that, you know, once you start wearing it, if you, if you end up stop wearing it, that's going to be some one of those ghost pains, and then, and then even when you're wearing it, all of a sudden you'll feel it vibrate and go, man, what's it vib- It's not vibrating. I thought it was. Yeah. It looked felt like it was vibrating, and uh, I maybe it's just me, but you know, I've I I I don't know. I I think that it, it it's not going to be a big big deal, but it's going to be something that people are going to think about. Um, and like I said, the lim- even uh, even another perfect example. You wear glasses. I've worn glasses since I was in third grade. And the one thing that you can probably see is that small indentation on the sides of my head where my glasses were because they pushed in a little bit. And Google Glass pushes in a little bit. And if you eventually wear that design of Google Glass, you'll uh, eventually you might see an indentation of the Google Glass in there. Will it happen? I don't know. It's possible possibilities there but uh and and i'm going off on the deep end at this point but uh let's i'll reel it back a little bit um more on the fact of you know like i said i have a skin condition um and if i have something like uh, uh certain metals put on i need to understand what they're doing and how they're working if they're just pushing out light to see how my veins are reacting like uh like certain devices do and that's fine. If they're sending little electrical pulses through my system and figure out what's going on, that might become a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Shock, 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 shocking me. Yeah. Thus thus far, all the stuff has been 
external or all the mass market stuff has been external. So uh, if things get um, more prevalent and people say, ooh, I want something more accurate, I'll actually, you know, embed something under the skin. Uh, that, that, that becomes a whole nother issue, but yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, all it's, oh, yeah, it, we haven't, it, we haven't, we haven't even touched that. That's for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about wearables, not so much internables or whatever you call them when they're, um, inside, but yeah, it's like, I think, you know, Fitbit saw that, uh, with the, you know, with their, with their recent news, you know, with their, with their problem that they had, you know, so they're going to be very wary of it. Like it wouldn't take very many, uh, bad reactions like that to, um, turn people off of it, or at least turn a lot of the public off to it. Cause they would hear, Oh yeah, I heard those things cause rashes and you gotta be real careful if you've got one or something, yeah. you know, like it wouldn't take very many stories like that. Um, that may be why a lot of the, the smart watches are going with, you know, like the, the, I'm sorry, I almost said Xbox 360. The Moto 360 uh, is using the Moto 360 or, uh, for my wrist is an Xbox 360, uh, but it's a um, it uses just like a leather strap, and so it's like it's a very proven, you know, material. Like you don't hear you know anything about people that are allergic to leather. There probably yeah. are people that are, and and they can't really wear leather, but you know, by using more common wearable uh, materials, then they, they're going to avoid a lot of those issues. So you might see a lot of these manufacturers go with more natural, more standard, more common materials, as opposed to trying to find something unique and special and this new polymer and stuff, because they're like, you know what, let's use what, what's already out there. And people won't, people won't get upset about our leather wrist strap if they have a reaction to it. As long as those people have reactions to every leather wrist strap on every watch and, you know, like, but if ours is some special thing, it might mess it up. So, yeah, that's true. Eric asks, uh, can you wear the watches on the inside of your wrist? Uh, will the features still work? Well, the, the answer is simply, uh, it really depends on the watch you or device that you're getting. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if they specifically need to be looking at the backside of your uh, wrist, then yes, uh, I would say that it would be easier for a watch to read the the underside of your wrist because that's where your veins are, mm -hmm. uh, and that's 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 where that's what they're trying to read. So I would guess that it's 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 actually better to have it flipped around. But it's also it's also a good idea because you know you're you're changing up. You could be changing up the way that you're uh, that you're wearing your device. Therefore, it's not at the same place at the same time in the same direction. So, you know, on Mondays, Tuesday, M Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, you wear your watch on your left arm. And on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, or Saturdays and Sundays, you wear them on your right and yeah. uh, and flip it back and forth and go from there. Uh, whether that, I, we don't know what it's going to do. And, you know, maybe five, ten years from now, we're going to be wearing a lot of wearable technology. Five, ten years from now, it, it might just be a whole bunch of people going, well, we we're just putting these up there just to make sure, and we're definitely going to have cases because we've already had a case with the Fitbit go in there, and uh, we're going to have cases where people's wearables are going to cause problems. I wouldn't be surprised if a year or two down the road we're going to have a news story and somebody's got a wearable that explodes like their cell phone or something like that, and they're going to try and sue the company for for it. So. It, it's all up in the air. It really depends on what wearables are made. And even uh, in the article, uh, ADI Research estimated by 2019, the world will have 780 million wearable devices, smart glasses, heart monitors, uh, that would be a part of a regular part of the consumer's life. Um, and, you know, if you've got a pacemaker in right now, you've technically got a wearable, even if it doesn't have Bluetooth capability or anything like that. But we've already talked about uh, pacemakers that do have Bluetooth capability and wireless capability. If the heart stops beating, it sends a signal right away. It says, hey, this guy's in arrest. This person's in arrest. It's time to, to jump into action and go from there. So maybe maybe those medical, um, maybe the, the few outweigh the, the, the overall picture, um, and that's saving somebody's life. Yeah, that, that'll be the other side. Is it, it won't take very many stories of people saying, 
Well, because I had my smart device, whatever it is, with my whatever this wearable is, you know, I was able to detect something sooner. I was able to detect it at all. I, mm -hmm. you know, I felt more confident that it, this was something unusual. And so I went to a doctor and, you know, a few of those and people will be like, uh, yeah, I better get that. Or I better make sure that my, my parents have that, you know, because if it's some sort of health related, you know, monitoring system, everybody's going to be all over that as, um, as people get older and, you know, as, as the people that are tech savvy have parents that, you know, aren't maybe as tech savvy, uh, they'll be kind of pushing that on their, their parents to say, Hey, you need this. You need to be, um, you need to be getting, you need to be wearing this so that we can keep track. And, you know, it's kind of like those, those, um, the little, uh, button for, right. I've fallen and I can't get up and be able to call for help. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of along those lines. I know we've talked about things like that before. Um, so that, I mean, there's, there's positive aspects to it. We shouldn't be saying that this, you know, wearables are doomed and there's only going to be problems with them. And yeah, they might sound good. So we're not trying to say that there aren't positive safety implications, but people do need to think about the, the negative ones and think about, you know, these, these kind of allergic reactions and temperature and electromagnetic yeah. radiation and, you know, stuff that, um, we just don't know long-term effects on. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. And even Eric just said, you know, uh, uh, there's already reports of Apple Watch rash going out there, and uh, it's a. Uh, I, I think that it will it'll happen. It'll happen no matter what what happens. I mean, we, we get rashes for wearing clothing. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a there's a thing out there called jungle rot, and if you don't know what that means, I'm not going to really explain it. But uh, you can go look it up on Google or the internet and, and uh, find out what jungle rot or jungle rash is. Um, but, uh, you know, if you've ever had a pair of socks uh, or a pair of shoes, your, your feet have blisters after walking for a while because you're in shoes, um, then, you know, you know you've, you've experienced that same thing. So uh, I had a backpack. When I went to NAB, I took a backpack with me. Um, and I didn't have my regular backpack because it uh, kind of was falling apart. So I took it. I sent it to Targets because it has a, a lifetime warranty on it, and they sent me a new one. But I had to take another backpack to NAB, so I took one of these cheaper ones, ones I actually get when I go to these these things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the one I took had this really interesting back to it that by the end of NAB, my there were the two sides of my back actually had rashes on them. Because of the way that they were rubbing up against the uh, up against my body, so not everything is. And I bet you, I could give you you that backpack, and you'd probably love it till the end of time and never get a rash from that. So, and it's just the way things are. Way I'm built as opposed to the way you are built. Yeah, there's also this whole sizing issue. I mean, that I don't even think the article touched on that. Was you know how will different devices fit on different people and will yeah. it has you know or will it have different sort of impacts there like you said you know oh this uh the, the apple backpack you know fits great on me but these you know some people it's not fitting great on or you know exactly. it's causing these you know wear things and so um yeah people will say oh well turns out you can't just make one size fits all of every single thing and <laughs> and just uh say that that's what we make so um you know, yeah. even Apple is uh, on the different bands for the Apple Watch, you know, different materials, different mm -hmm. sizes. So, you know, they're they're trying to have enough options, I'm sure. Part of it is, well, what if someone is allergic to that? You know, what if they, um, you know, or what if that, you know, that, that has some sort of reaction or, yeah, does something with their skin. So we need to yeah. have different bands uh, just, yeah. because, just to make sure that we're on par with everyone else. So. Exactly. And, and one other thing I wanted to address with what you said, and that is we are, we are exaggerating it big time because that's the idea of, of doing this, doing a, a focus, is to say, you know, this is out there. Um, will you ever have that problem? Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, but it's, it's, it's not about that. It's just about being aware that if you get a watch and you put it on and after a couple of days you take it off and there's three little green spots on there, 
Um, that's because of the chemical reaction between you and, and the watch. If you've got a gold watch, this is, this is the funny thing. That, and it just blows my mind. Anybody that gets a gold watch, if you get a gold watch and you put that gold up against your skin, it's going to rub off. That's, it's, that's what gold will do. That's why, uh, that's why on an Oscar, many people hold it at the base and they'll hold it for a very short time because the oils on the skin start to erode, erode the gold, and then that gets back on the skin, and next thing you've got gold on your hands. You don't realize it, but you do. And so it's just, it's just one of those things. It's a, it's a transfer thing, and you can go from there. But we're exaggerating on it, but the reality is um, small, small pockets are going to get it. Apple, like as we said, some people with the Apple Watch have already complained about it. I remember I used to wear an Iron Man watch when uh, in in the '90s, and I loved that thing. But yeah, it had its problems, and every now and then, I had uh, I had stinky wrist. If you've ever worn yeah. a watch for a yeah. long time, you know what stinky wrist is. That's for sure. So oh, yeah. oh, it's kind of yeah. like jungle rod, except with the wrist. So yeah, no, I've had uh, I've, <laughs> I've definitely had that with uh, some of my watches growing up. Some of the, the cheaper uh, plastic watches, and I'd wear them all day as a as a uh, teenager and you know you're sweating more and you're you know all that kind of stuff and so yeah it's uh yeah yeah it's gonna ha it's gonna happen with lots of different wearable devices so technologically wearable devices or technological wearable devices aren't any different in that regard yeah definitely so all right well i think we uh we beat that dead horse with another dead horse so it's it's all good to go if you have a question i mean uh, there there's stuff we didn't touch because you know we're not doctors or anything like that oh, yeah. We don't play them on TV. We don't play them on the Internet. We don't play, you know, it, it is what it is. So uh, if you have questions on that, you can let us know, and we can address them as best we can. Uh, maybe I'll get Jamie back on uh, to talk about the uh, ab about the, the uh, health risks of devices like that uh, on the skin and go from there. So if you've got any questions, feel free to contact me, Jeff at wearabletoday.com or Geekazine. That's my Twitter handle, which is right here and go from there and luke how did how people get a hold of you you can find me on twitter at luke luca that's l-u-k-e-l-u-c-a you can find me on google plus at google.com slash plus luke wallace and you can find me at the email address shown below luke at wearabletoday.com or if you want to reach out to birdie send birdie a quick email it's birdie at wearabletoday.com that's b-i-r-d-i-e at wearabletoday.com all right and thanks a lot to Eric for uh, being in the chat room, asking some questions. We've had a couple of viewers on the live show. If you want to be part of the live show, simply come down here every single Monday, uh, 8 p.m., well, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, like I said with uh, earlier scheduling note, uh, next couple of weeks uh, we are going to be on travel. So, And then, of course, the holiday uh, smack dab in the middle. So we'll see what we can do and getting an, another episode out in between there, but uh, no promises. Um, but just watch uh, wearabletoday.com and the YouTube page, which I just spent a little bit of time redoing. Um, that's over at youtube.com forward slash This Week in Glass, I believe. Let me double check that because I did that before uh, we switched it over to Wearable Today. But just look for Wearable Today on Google, and you'll be able to find it and go from there. So Yeah, I always, I always look for the... Wearable Today Google Plus page. If you follow them on uh, Google Plus, that always like you, you make up a nice event for the live hangout there, and uh, so that's really probably the way to make sure you don't miss a show if if you're checking Google Plus. There you go. So, thanks a lot, Luke, for your time, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see you next time. Sounds good. Bye, Birdie. Okay. <laughs> and bye to you. You guys geek out. We'll see you next time. Uh, you've been watching another episode of Wearable Today. Take care. And have a, if, if we, uh, let me start over and, and get my English going. And if uh, you have a great Memorial Day weekend, if we don't catch you on the flip side. Take care.